Hi everyone, this is Robin West from the Developer Outreach Group. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. We are talking about um, Bluetooth Low Energy and some of the different uh, tools that Zebra has for it, as well as um, how to integrate it with uh, your different solutions. Um, so today we have um, Nicola Desolt and Manuel Caicedo Rivera to uh, present for you. Um, please, uh, uh, as always, always make sure to ask your questions in the question box and we will uh, answer them as they uh, come in. So thank you so much and I'm going to hand it over to uh, Nicola and uh, Manuel. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Robin. And uh, hello, everybody. Um, thank you for joining the, today's Dev Talk. We have a lot of exciting topics, uh, as uh, Robin said. It's all around Bluetooth Low Energy and, uh, and um, related use cases. So just a um, uh, quick introduction of myself. My name is Nicola, as uh, Robin said, but I'm a sales engineer in uh, Zebra Technologies Italy. I'm based in Milan. And uh, here with me, we also have uh, Manuel. Manuel, maybe you want to introduce yourself. Hello, everybody. So this is Manuel Caicedo. Um, so I am basically, I am the ISB uh, integration and validation lead uh, for printing. I'm going to be supporting um, Nicola during uh, today's presentation. It's a very exciting presentation. I hope you can enjoy it. And um, so let's start, Nicola. OK, thank you, Manuel. Um, I think we can take a look at the agenda. Um, after a brief introduction about the technology of uh, Bluetooth Low Energy, uh, we'll uh, basically see uh, the Zebra offering uh, uh, from the hardware and software perspective in the Bluetooth Low Energy world. And um, then uh, we'll go deep dive to understand uh, how to leverage such uh, technology uh, for printing and um, particularly using our SDK. SDK. Uh, NFC will also be covered. Uh, we will end by talking about uh, impact uh, zebra solutions for beacon and um, and location based uh, applications so um, just uh, an insight of the bluetooth low energy technology um, i think uh, it's good to to have a, a comparison of the standard and the low energy uh, protocols uh, we all know the 2.x uh, uh, standard Bluetooth, uh, the 4.x uh, is uh, um, rather new and uh, supported by many, many devices. And here uh, I try to, to compare the two. Um, basically, uh, the, uh, both uh, share the same uh, physical layer in the radio frequency around the 2.4 gigahertz. Um, and um, the main difference is that standard Bluetooth covers uh, and supports uh, uh, 79 channels uh, with one megahertz uh, bandwidth. Instead, uh, Bluetooth Low Energy um, supports only 40 channels, uh, using three of them to uh, advertise, but have um, a wider uh, spacing of two megahertz in the bandwidth. Um, about the, um, the speed, uh, the standard Bluetooth uh, basic rate is one megabit per second, so enhanced to two megabit in, uh, in the um, uh, earlier version. Um, while the, the low energy um, protocol exploits uh, uh, one megabit per second uh, speed. But beyond technical data of um, this kind, uh, the main difference uh, is uh, um, uh, from the application perspectives. So, uh, and, and the way the protocols were designed for. So we typically say that uh, standard Bluetooth uh, uh, has to be applied for data stream Data stream means a long uh, chain of data that must be sent over the Bluetooth connections. Uh, in particular, um, in the, you know, in the um, world uh, such, um, such as uh, voice and, and music streaming, but uh, uh, in, um, the, in the closer world to, uh, for us, an interesting point is, uh, for instance, a firmware update uh, 
So downloading a firmware towards a printer, for instance, is good when done over a standard Bluetooth um, uh, connection. Instead, the, the low energy uh, Bluetooth was designed to send a small packets of data, meaning um, that the application must connect, transmit, and disconnect, and, and then go sleeping uh, to uh, the next um, connection and transmission. Under this point of view, the Bluetooth Low Energy has been designed to be very powerful efficient. Um, and um, as I wrote in this, um, in this slide, uh, um, training only uh, one microamp during the sleep mode. On the converse, uh, the, um, the standard Bluetooth uh, is a bit uh, um, more, um, uh, not so efficient under this point of view. The Bluetooth Low Energy, um, beyond that, uh, has also a uh, low latency connection, meaning that uh, when you ask uh, um, your hardware to make a connection, it only takes uh, three milliseconds. And uh, uh, that's uh, very quick and allows you to uh, continually uh, start a new transmission, disconnecting and uh, reconnecting again. Um, uh, and uh, other point of view, uh, another point of view on uh, the Bluetooth low energy is, um, is uh, uh, of course, uh, the small difference between the uh, standard 4.0 and 4.1. The 4.1, for instance, was uh, um, introduced to address uh, the LTE coexistence uh, because other standards uh, share the same uh, spectrum. And so uh, that was uh, addressing this uh, standard. Uh, I think uh, we can um, um, now move on to uh, see and analyze the Zebra offering about uh, Bluetooth Low Energy. First of all, uh, let's take a closer look to the uh, mobile computers uh, offered by Zebra um, and um, uh, that has a Bluetooth Low Energy radio built in. The first three, the TC51, uh, TC70, TC55, are all handheld uh, devices designed for both uh, indoor and outdoor use. Um, instead, the MC18, the, four in the, the fourth in the list, is uh, uh, the um, device designed for the retail personal self-scanning. So, um, a very particular use case um, uh, where uh, uh, Bluetooth Low Energy can uh, be leveraged with uh, um, a, a lot of power. Uh, instead, the last three devices uh, in, in the list, the VC80, the TC8000, and WT, are all uh, warehouse and industrial devices. Um, the Bluetooth Low Energy uh, can offer a lot of advantages also in the warehouse and uh, industrials. Then we can take a look at the Bluetooth Low Energy printers. Such a technology was introduced in the printers recently. And uh, you maybe know that uh, Zebra, that is uh, um, the leader in, in printing solutions, uh, uh, offers uh, uh, three layers of, uh, of printing. One is the mobile, then the desktop or middle, uh, middle range, and the industrial printer for uh, heavy duty applications. So for uh, the mobile uh, uh, layer, we have the ZQ500 um, series. For the desktop, uh, the ZD400 series uh, that comes uh, in the normal way and also in the healthcare version. And then uh, for the industrial uh, printer, the ZT600 is also um, offering the Bluetooth low energy features. And uh, uh, to the, the, other, the other offering in the hardware of Zebra is about uh, the beacons. And we will see later uh, that this is connected to the MPAT solution in particular. 
Beacons are uh, devices uh, that advertise uh, themselves continuously and um, they have different shapes uh, and powers uh, depending on the application they are designed to for and uh, we offer them three kinds of them the leftmost is a uh, wall mount beacons uh, for typical indoor use uh, and for the retail and um, other application where the the user is uh, in, in the radius of some meters uh, of the um, of the beacon then we have the USB powered, um, a very nice uh, device because it's uh, powered by the USB, so you don't have to rely on, on batteries. But unfortunately, it's uh, um, certified for US use only. Um, and then the last uh, kind of, um, of beacon is uh, the outdoor one. The outdoor is a very powerful and uh, ruggedized beacon. It can work uh, between minus 40 and plus 60 degrees temperature, so it's completely sealed, so it can be even submerged in, um, in the water, and its battery can last uh, as long as three years or even, even more. We'll talk about beacons later in this uh, presentation. So now let's uh, um, move on to the main use uh, case we want to show. It is about um, uh, Bluetooth low energy printing. Um, you, many, many of you may have uh, experience in printing from um, a mobile device to a printer that can be mobile itself or maybe a stationary one. Uh, using the standard Bluetooth. In the video, I'll show you um, in the uh, just uh, in a few seconds, uh, you'll see um, a printing that is based on the RSSI uh, signal level of the Bluetooth low energy received by the handheld device that uh, uh, when um, that, that is um, um, detecting the signal, and uh, when the signal is uh, strong enough, it decides uh, you are so close to the, the, the printer and the printer can actually start. So let's try watching this video. I have an application running on the mobile device. I come close to the printer. The printer is uh, detected and the print and printing can uh, immediately be started. Then I move to another printer. This is a ZD400 and the same happens. Of course, uh, this, uh, this is not a kind of magic, of course, but it's all um, based on the location. So we can call this case a location-based printing. And uh, everything starts and is based on, on two moments. Uh, the first one, when the printer advertises itself, so other applications running on Android or mobile devices can uh, understand a printer is uh, in um, in a, in a short range of distance. Uh, and then in the second part, when uh, the application has decided uh, that a particular a specific printer must be uh, used, it can print actually on that printer. So um, uh, following the points and the bullets points I, I have, I'm showing now on the, on the screen, the printer it advertises itself. And so it's act, acting like a beacon. So when you enable the Bluetooth low energy on a, on a printer, one of those I've showed in, um, in the previous slide, um, the, the, the printer is actually uh, working as a beacon. And uh, the power of that is the mobile computer can detect the printer signal and understand the friendly name of, of the printer the Bluetooth address, that is the most important uh, uh, information coming from the advertisement of the printer, and then continually um, uh, measuring, gauging uh, the, um, how strong is the signal, um, reading the RSSI level, the received signal uh, from the printer. In this way, um, using the dB meters, um, you can uh, actually understand how far you are from the, from the printer. An application running on the device so can uh, understand how far it is and choose where and when printing. 
depending on the security model, um, you can uh, print directly or enable uh, your application and your end user to push a button to print or uh, whatever you want, but in some sometimes um, a pin may be required to be input for security reasons. In the next slide, we can show um, and we can see um, a couple of uh, examples and uh, practical use cases uh, when well, this, ca this uh, kind of printing and location-based printing is uh, particularly useful. Uh, for stationary printers, uh, um, uh, the user, the, the end user typically is uh, walking uh, toward the printer and um, as I did in uh, the video you watched uh, um, just a few seconds ago. And um, so the business app enables a specific feature to that place. Uh, a use case may be um, an end user shopping inside um, a food shop and entering some particular area such as beverages uh, or vegetables one and so on and getting a coupon for the fact it is uh, in front and uh, entering that area and um, in, in, by the, in this way, the printing of course uh, without the user interaction or uh, without the need uh, that the end user chooses uh, the specific printer when he where he wants to um, uh, the printing actually to occur. Of course, uh, while you are inside the four walls uh, uh, for a specific and controlled application, uh, security can be uh, at a minimum level, but. Uh, this of course uh, um, helps uh, operation to speed up and um, and, uh, and of course in the, instead uh, in public places uh, when uh, you have a lot of people and unknown people coming uh, close to, for instance to your printer it's better to use a pin and enable uh, security another interesting use case instead is uh, about mobile printing and um, um, when the, um, it, it, it happens uh, when in, um, in environments uh, where there are, there are lots uh, of uh, shared Bluetooth devices, uh, such as a lot of uh, um, mobile devices and a lot of printers. Uh, it happens, for instance, uh, for postmen in the morning when they have to uh, build up a kit and choose uh, um, a device and a printer and go out uh, in the street. Uh, uh, through this kind of, um, of use case, uh, the, um, the end user can simply pick randomly uh, a, a mobile device, pick randomly a mobile printer, and uh, without the need and of investing money, uh, investing time in pairing the, um, the two devices, he can simply uh, go out and the two devices acknowledge themselves and start working together. This is very powerful and, uh, and um, saves a lot of time. And, uh, and beyond that, it leaves no footprints behind. So once uh, you're back to your, um, to your people, you can, simply, um, you can simply put away your mobile device and your printing and everything can be restarted the, the, day, the next day without uh, any footprint left. The NFC, we will see it later, uh, offers an alternative choice for that and um, uh, also is capable of helping uh, to dynamically um, pair and uh, build kits in a high density Bluetooth environment. Okay, um, I think uh, um, we can uh, hear something from, um, from Manuel about uh, the Bluetooth Low Energy SDK and the way it can uh, help uh, in building application uh, um, leveraging this technology. So, Manuel, if you want okay. to um, Hello. Okay, thank you, Nicola. Uh, thank you also for having very interesting the presentation. So, going back to um, the ways that you can have this uh, um, SDK. So, basically, um, I don't know, uh, Larry, 
could you give me an option to be presenter one moment? Larry or Robbie? Can you see my screen now? Yes. Yes, we can. Okay, good. So basically there are two ways uh, that you can get the um, the SDK. So basically we have a LinkOS multiplatform SDK. So basically what we want you guys is uh, download the multiplatform SDK. And once you have it downloaded, uh, you will find basically once the uh, SDK have been installed in your computer, uh, you will see so basically a uh, folders where you will go through the Android Bluetooth low energy. So the, as you see, there are two different folders, one for uh, Android standard Bluetooth and another uh, folder for Bluetooth, uh, Android Bluetooth low energy. Uh, also, if you want to <clears throat> uh, see the API, the best option to go through the SPI is going to um to the Zebra developer portal and Zebra developer portal there is a api references you go to printing and in printing you will be going to uh link os for android and directly will show up the different uh alternatives that you have for android android bluetooth low energy um and the different options. So you go to uh, Android Bluetooth Low Energy and you will have access to the API. So you can review all of the options that you can use for Bluetooth Low Energy. Hey Manuel, I had a question about um, where to get sample code for Android, um, specifically the TC51, but um, I know that in the Bluetooth Low Energy SDK that we've got, we have some sample code in there. Uh, we also will be posting uh, Nicola's sample code that he was showing a little bit earlier. We'll be posting that to GitHub, uh, and we'll send out a, a notification to everyone registered on this uh, webinar that uh, when that's been posted um, so that you guys can pull down that particular sample code as well. Um, but for right now, it is in the, uh, in the actual SDK. There's sample code that's available there. So yes, basically on the SDK, basically when you go to the SDK, like I show it now, uh, inside of the folder of uh, Droid Bluetooth Low Energy, you will see three different uh, um, folders, one for the demos, one for the libraries, one for the documentation. You go to the demos, you will see one for the source code, and uh, you can review the source code there. So you will have all of the options here. You can download your options for uh, simple demos for connectivity discovery and the other options all of them completely uh, functionals in bluetooth low energy okay coming back to the presentation so once we have a review this about uh, how you can download uh, the bluetooth low energy sdk uh, there are i want to mention basically two things that i, I want to uh, uh, reinforce today when you're working with our uh, um, Bluetooth, uh, our mobile printers, and also with uh, using the LinkOS SDK, uh, we have two options to implement the communication. So we have two channels for communication. One channel for printing, as you see, using the, stand, uh, the standard connection, Bluetooth low energy connect, uh, connection, and one other channel to capture a status from the printer. So you will have one Bluetooth status connection uh, to capture the status. So, and the, the way to implement is the multi channel. So, with the multi channel, you will have the option to call the printing channel or the status channel. So, uh, Nicola, you can continue now with the rest of the presentation. Thank you, Manuela. Um, waiting so, to become the presenter again. Okay, showing my screen. Okay. And um, um going on and moving on from what um, manuel introduced now uh, let's take a close look to the code that um, brought to the application that i showed before in that video so and there are the android point of view first of all you need to um, enable your application to access uh, your location Declaring it a uh, course or find location um, 
when using the Bluetooth Low Energy because Android addresses uh, and uh, links uh, closely the Bluetooth Low Energy to the location, so uh, a special permission must, um, must be required and granted by the user, of course. And you don't forget to ask for Bluetooth and Bluetooth admin permission as well. If you are um, developing for an Android API 23 or um, above, you now need to explicitly ask for a runtime permission so your application the first time it's uh, it is uh, installed and run on a, an android device uh, must uh, um, ask the user the um, you can see the pop-up in the right upper corner of the of the slide to accept or so to allow or deny um, the locationing of uh, of the of the device and um, if the user um, agrees then uh, you have to um, uh, you have to manage this um, this reply with the request permission um, um, with the request permission to show the pop-up and then the, the with the on the request permission result uh, as a callback uh, function that manages that um, that um, uh, choice. Uh, having that said, you, your application can uh, um, make use of the uh, Zebra Low Energy um, Low Energy SDK by including in the Lips uh, folder the um, the jar, the ZSDK Android BTLE jar, and uh, uh, most of the job is done under this point of view so in, uh, so far you have your application ready to um, go on and uh, you can now um, focus on um, uh, enabling uh, your bluetooth adapter you first of all have to um, retrieve a handle to your local bluetooth adapter and then um, most of the time and uh, for instance in, um, in the location based printing uh, sample you want to start uh, a bluetooth uh, low energy scanning of the device surrounding your um, device and yourself so you call the api get the bluetooth le scanner after that um, um, uh, and after the, um, in the in the meanwhile, you want to set up also some uh, um, some settings related to the way the scanning must be performed. So, uh, for instance, you can ask Android to work with a low latency with an aggressive mode, and um, that's a way to ask Android to notify your application of every new device discovered in the surroundings. And uh, there are also different, um, uh, different uh, parameters uh, under this point of view, uh, so you, your application can be more or less responsive to um, newly discovered devices. Uh, in the end, you start scanning, passing all these uh, settings that you have just built, and uh, in the next slide, we see um, the effects of uh, having started uh, um, the scanning. When you, when you start scanning for Bluetooth and um, low energy devices surrounding, you also have to specify and uh, declare the callback, uh, the callback uh, um, function that provides you a scan result object. You can see um, you you can see this uh, in the left uh, middle uh, part of the slide, and um, uh, thanks to this callback, you ho you have your code have all the information related to the specific uh, discovered um, object, and uh, from that you can re easily retrieve. Uh, let's see it in the uh, last. Uh, rows uh, of the slide uh, that you can get the, the RSSI level, you can get the, the address, uh, the Bluetooth uh, address of the, um, of the printing, the printer, uh, if, it's, uh, if it's a printer, but it may, of course may also be a generic beacon. Uh, 
you get uh, the friendly name of this device and uh, the timestamps uh, when it happened. Just to give you an idea how a printer uh, works uh, at the same way uh, as a beacon when uh, advertising itself, take a look at the upper right cor corner of the slide through a generically available application I had on my iOS phone, um, I could see at the same time an MPAC beacon listed uh, together with a, a printer. The MPAC beacon is the first one, of course, it uh, uh, by itself. And the second one, is X, starting with the XXRB, is a friendly name of, the, of, a, of a printer. And, um, at the same way, in the, um, in the picture, in the lower part of the slide, you can see all the um, all what I was discovering in the, that, that moment uh, during the last um, app forum uh, held uh, uh, one month ago. So let's move on and, and let's take a look at how to analyze and uh, react to um, uh, after having discovered a, a, a new um, a new object uh, through the low energy device. Uh, first of all, um, we have to decide what is our business logic in, in order to take uh, um, an action uh, when a specific device is discovered. In, in my case, I decided to uh, ignore um, events that were coming up uh, so close uh, in time so um, I, I wanted only to process uh, newly discovered devices uh, after some seconds. Uh, uh, if you don't do that, of course, uh, you, you, are, you are overwhelmed by, um, by devices if you find yourself in a really Bluetooth uh, dense uh, environment. And um, after that, uh, I'm, I'm printing uh, the basic uh, data coming uh, from, um, from the devices discovered. And the business logic here is based on the RSSI level. So I decided that below minus 60 dB, uh, I was uh, far away enough to basically do nothing with that uh, printer. So I'm ignoring it. Um, I wanted to, um, to make uh, um, some advert advertisement sound from the um, device when I was getting closer to the printer. So below, between uh, min minus 60 and minus 40, I was just uh, beeping loudly uh, to, the, um, to the end user just to, um, to tell him that something is going to happen. And uh, above minus 40 dB in uh, signal power, I started printing in the way you watched before. So I sent uh, some uh, ZPL code uh, over the Bluetooth low energy. I can uh, show the details in the next slide. And um, this, uh, this function, first of all, stops scanning uh, from the surrounding beacons because uh, if I come here, I have chosen a specific uh, printer where I want to print. And um, Having, uh, having available the, the Bluetooth uh, MAC address uh, of the printer, I can open the connection. Of course, uh, take a look. Uh, it, I'm using the Bluetooth LE connection to make a Bluetooth low energy connection. Then I open it. And, um, and after that, uh, I set up a small, uh, um, a small uh, ZPL code. You know that ZPL is one of the languages you can uh, um, use to develop and print uh, to build the uh, receipts uh, or um, other kind of printings on, on Zebra printers. So you see some uh, ZPL code embedded in, um, in the Java code here. Basically, I'm building up a long string with all the necessary code. I also want to print the RSSI I was using at the time. And finally, I simply write that string of data to the printer through the connection I opened before over the Bluetooth Low Energy. Just giving a few milliseconds of time to, um, for the job to end, and uh, I can close the connection. And so the printing is done. 
um, at, um, at this point, uh, we, we can see uh, how to set up the printer to work uh, this way because uh, printers uh, um, in the, uh, the models I showed before um, can uh, work with the classic uh, Bluetooth, the Bluetooth Low Energy, or both the ways. So first of all, you need a tool to set up a printer. This tool, the basic one and working on uh, desktop PCs and laptops, uh, it's called Zebra Setup Utilities. You choose, uh, you install and choose a, a particular printer. You are connecting the, by um, USB cable, and uh, there's a specific button to configure the printer connectivity. You choose the Bluetooth uh, uh, connectivity you want to print, and then you come to um, to a screen where you choose the Bluetooth controller mode, and so there um, you can choose either the classic and low energy or only the low energy one to work uh, with this kind of uh, code uh, we showed so far. If you want to enable uh, some security model, you have also to, um, to go through the net to the latest um, screen where the minimum security mode and pairing mode are chosen. I can move now on to show you what are the, the real SGD commands that the configuring tool is sending to the printer. The same, um, the same uh, setups that chosen in the previous slides are translated into SGD commands. SGD is a short for um, set, get, do commands. Uh, sort of uh, uh, high-level um, commands uh, to um, configure the printers to, uh, through a command line. And so you set, uh, I was enabling the Bluetooth, for instance, uh, it was uh, set to a discoverable mode on, and uh, in particular, one of the last rows is a controller mode LE, specifying that I wanted the printer to work only on uh, the low energy mode. The device is then reset and uh, uh, everything starts working um, that, the way I have set. Uh, when a pin is set up for security pairing, uh, if your printer has a display, you see the security code shown over there, like in the picture in this slide. Uh, if the printer has no display, you'll see it printed on, um, on the label, on the, on, on the media inside the printer. I think we can now, uh, with the help of Manuel, have also a look to another Printing printer um, a tool very useful to set up the printer in in a manner um, close to the one I have shown so far. So Manuel, please. Uh, Thank you, Nicola. Uh, yes, basically, um, there are two ways uh, right now to uh, enable or set up the printers in Bluetooth Low Energy. One way, as uh, Nicola explained was using the Zebra Zebra Utilities tool that you can download and run on your PCs. Another option is, uh, uh, as the um, slide is presenting, is with the um, Android tool. It's called Android Setup Print Utility App. You can download this from uh, our uh, from uh, Google Play Services. Look just for Android Setup Print Utility App. And uh, once you have it downloaded, uh, you will go to uh, the first uh, image of the uh, printer setup. In printer setup, uh, you will go to connectivity settings. Uh, from connectivity settings, you will show up. Uh, uh, will show up Bluetooth, and um, in Bluetooth, uh, will show up uh, different options like uh, the several uh, uh, utilities PC tool shows. Uh, the only difference here will be for the control controller mode. In controller mode, you will see classic. Classic refers to a standard Bluetooth. A smart a smart refers to the new Bluetooth low energy, and a smart ready refers to both connections, so Bluetooth Low Energy and Bluetooth Standard connected at the same time. However, for testing purposes, I will suggest anything, uh, uh, every time that you are uh, starting to work with the printers and you want to test the option for Bluetooth Low Energy, go with the smart option that uh, uh, will tell you um, 
how uh, you can work with uh, the Bluetooth Low Energy. Um, basically, uh, you can move to the next slide, um, Nicola. So, uh, in addition uh, to the, um, the tool with the printer setup utility that you can download from Google Play services, uh, uh, as explained before, uh, when you download the SDK and the SDK, you will find some demos, very useful demos that you can use to test connectivity and all of the functionality of the printers. So um, from there, you can see uh, basically what we, we call best practices and uh, those best practices is when we suggest developers to follow uh, to uh, enable bidirectional communication with the printer so you can communicate with the printers and the um, smart decision here if uh, ask the printer the status before to send print jobs so during that uh, communication the printer will uh, provide you a response if the printer has paper or everything is ready the printer will say that it's ready otherwise the printer will let you know if something is happening if the uh, the print head is uh, open, uh, the dot is open, or if it uh, doesn't have paper. All of that information is part, of, is part of what we call best practices, and all of that information is contained into the sample demos that we have. So you can go to the next slide, um, Nicola. And uh, basically, it's based, what I was explaining to you, one example is using the printer setup utility, even you can, uh, you can test what we call the best practices on your right, you will see one image from the printer set utility, and it's basically when the print, uh, print head is open, will show up the errors. So just uh, uh, show you guys how you can uh, follow and you can see in real uh, mode the printer working with best practices. Uh, one more other best practices that we suggest with, uh, when you're working with Bluetooth Low Energy. As Nicole explained at the beginning, the differences between Bluetooth Low Energy and standard Bluetooth, uh, Bluetooth Low Energy is basically for low data transmission. So normally we suggest and uh, in, uh, encourage uh, developers to work with that uh, that um, idea in mind. So basically try to send low, uh, low data transmission, avoid to send uh, graphics to the printer. If you need to use graphics, basically the idea is that you don't load the graphic on the printer and you will call this graphic using templates. And the other thing I explained to you is that uh, check the status before to send print jobs. Okay, so you can move to the next slide. I think it's uh, all that I had to say. Okay. Yes. We can okay, stop thank here. You, Manu. We can yeah. stop here, Nicola, one moment. And uh, we yes. will suggest to the audience, if somebody has any questions, please, uh, about the Bluetooth Low Energy with the printers, please do it now so we can answer those questions now because we want to move to a different topic. Yeah, I'm not seeing any message, any questions come in. Um, so why don't we move on? I know there was a question that came in about impact, but we can answer that as we get closer to that. Okay. So go ahead, uh, Nicola. Yes. Thank you, Ramin. And so, oh, sorry, I went on. Um, another. Oh, it's not starting. Okay. I want to show you another video. This time is about uh, NFC. Um, it's another way of uh, getting printer information and printing uh, uh, when you are very close uh, to, to a printer. In this case, uh, you, ha you have to, um, uh, to put your phone and, uh, or mobile device uh, very close or over the, the printer. Every new printer has a NFC tag built in and you can spot it by the specific sign. As you can see from the... Um, from from this example and in this uh, slide now the, the marks of the nfc are closely visible and you have just to do like uh, paying um, with a credit card or something else uh, the um, uh, retrieving the specific information needed to print and moving on uh, just uh, uh, a quick uh, look at the code. Um, the NFC is natively managed by Android, so you to leverage it, uh, you don't have to add uh, nothing else than the code you see in this uh, slide. Uh, you have just to address the actual and depth discovered 
uh, event and uh, through some uh, passable, um, passable uh, or, um, object you can um, you can retrieve the, um, the fields shown in the table below um, in the so in the NFC tag you can read the URL that is uh, bringing your application to um, a specific uh, Zebra page uh, explaining and giving you the um, uh, access to the user manual, then the Bluetooth MAC address, the WLAN if present, uh, the, uh, the LAN MAC address as well, and some other information about that. For printing, we just need the Bluetooth MAC address and um, uh, once done, this is simply uh, the same case shown before. Having that said, uh, we can now move to the impact we, uh, and to, to see what it is and how it works. So, MPAC, uh, MPAC is the Zebra solution that enables real-time location-based applications. It's a, a complex solution based on a, um, made of a server side and a client side um, part that, that uh, must run on handheld devices. The server side, uh, the server side of the impact uh, um, gathers all the information collected by the handheld devices while roaming around an environment that is filled with beacons. Uh, that are advertising themselves. Knowing where the beacons are set, your application can understand where it finds itself in the space and um, forward this information to the server that can now then uh, build uh, some analytics about that and, um, and notify other uh, business application by, about the presence of a user in a specific place and, um, and so enabling applications such as uh, real-time couponing or uh, enabling uh, um, other parts of uh, the business application to run based on the location. So um, a, quick, um, a quick tour of impact dashboard. Um, you can see that uh, um, through this in this slide uh, that um, by means of a map uh, you can locate uh, all the beacons uh, uh, distributed in the in the space and um, as seen as you can see in the left side um, you can arrange your places in um, in floors and uh, cities uh, and um, in that way, very easy so to access and go directly to a specific location where you want to analyze. When um, uh, some people is located in a, uh, in a, um, close to a beacon, uh, a small icon is uh, displayed on the screen. And so uh, you can also vis uh, visually understand how dense is um, uh, your, um, your place. Uh, based on the people visiting it, of course. And um, going on, uh, taking a look at the menu uh, offered by the impact, you have the uh, dashboard showing uh, uh, you, some quick analytics related to the last seven days of, of, the, of the calendar. So you can see um, the, the, new, the new customers, let's say, so uh, devices seen for, for the first time or returning device, another um, options. And uh, if enabled, you can also see the health of the beacons because uh, through a particular um, protocol beacons uh, can advertise the level of uh, their battery so it's uh, very important to take a look at this also just to have the battery placed uh, within the right time. Let's move on to see uh, some configuration menu. Um, it's um, um, impact offers the categories to uh, to um, group beacons together so you don't have to actually base your uh, application on the um, uh, bluetooth address of the single uh, beacons you deployed on, on the 
on, on, the, on the field because uh, of course uh, it can uh, be replaced uh, over time so if you base your application on categories uh, you're always uh, uh, it's like using a logical name and group and um, you can easily uh, decouple from uh, the um, pure hardware below um, Moving on to the notification subscriber, a very important feature offered by Impact is the fact that after gathering information um, into the server and storing it in a database, the information can also be relayed to third party uh, servers in a way in the form of a JSON um, um, file, uh, JSON um, form, formatting. Uh, information uh, through some um, HTTP calls. You have to simply set up uh, uh, an application um, such as a servlet running uh, on an application server outside and packed and uh, routing uh, all the information toward that server. In the next slide, we'll, uh, we see instead uh, where you can choose the type of, uh, trigger, um, of triggers that um, enable a notification. So you can, for instance, uh, decide to trigger a notification only when the, um, uh, the NN customer is seen for the first time close to a beacon, and that's uh, an enter way of, of doing that. Or instead also choosing to raise uh, a trigger, so a, a notification, um, uh, for a, a dwell time, um, so after uh, some times uh, passed uh, over, um, and close to the beacon, a notification is triggered. In this slide, we can see how a notification in the JSON format is done. The basic information that uh, build up uh, a uh, location uh, event uh, are where uh, the end user was, who it was uh, thanks to um, uh, an ID that is unique to every customer and uh, when it happened it's a timestamp of course in this kind uh, the notification was an entry type so the user was first seen for the first time um, um, at that place uh, at that time another time of notification is uh, is uh, shown here it's a dual time kind of notification so um, this is telling us uh, that uh, a certain uh, um, a certain device a tc55 with that uh, id specific id spent more than five minutes minutes uh, close to a beacon uh, called the code node in a certain floor of my organization and that happened at the, at the time shown there all the uh, location information are done that way and your uh, business application can leverage that because uh, in the real time they are um, they are triggered so you can uh, instantly react to um, and uh, and reach out to the user and reach out to the user a uh, close look to the impact um, um, SDK in, the, in some Java code. In this case, you have to access, uh, um, if, to build, of course, uh, uh, some Android application for the mobile, um, for the mobile devices. Uh, you have to access, to access the internet, so I must ask permission for that, for use the Bluetooth um, admin. The impact SDK is, uh, comes uh, in the form of a jar file, so you have just to embed it in, into your application. The jar file contains a service that is immediately running, and uh, basically during your setup, you have to bind this, um, this service. I think we can now move on and uh, basically um, do some um, uh, linking between our code and the underlying service. Uh, so um, at the end, when you ask uh, the MPAC client to start looking for beacons, you get the information of the latest and the closest beacon through a specific API called the DID, the term closest beacon tag. 
where you can retrieve the, the ID of the tag and uh, some other useful information uh, such as the RSSI level and the battery level. This is uh, um, very close to what we saw for the printer kind of example before. <clears throat> On the right uh, side of the screen, you can see the um, impact uh, sample code shown that comes with, um, with the server and the SDK. Uh, I think I, I'm over uh, about that. Maybe I heard from Robin that there was a question of, uh, about the impact. So before going through the recap, Robin, please. Uh, yeah, we did ask have your question. we did have one question about impact, and it was about do we actually have a beacon with a temperature sensor in it? Not so far. Not those uh, offered uh, not those uh, shown in this uh, um, in the slides before um, we have to check with the business unit if in the roadmap uh, there's something coming uh, about that okay thank you that was the uh, only question that's come in on Amazon. okay um, very good if we have time uh, I, I have just I, I just go through this uh, small uh, recap uh, in a um, in few words. We have seen the, the impact um, solution so far, and I won't spend um, any words uh, on that. Before that, uh, I was going, the, I was showing the NFC printing case. Uh, before the, that, it was uh, shown the location-based printing based uh, on the RSSI level, and in the beginning, we went through a small technology insight of the Bluetooth low energy versus the classic Bluetooth one. Um, I'm, I'm done so far. So, Robin, please. Yeah, just, um, just to recap, um, if you have any questions yeah. in the next couple of minutes, please put them. Um, there should be a questions box on the right hand side of the screen that you can enter your questions in and we'll, we'll answer them. Also, while we're uh, waiting for that, um, there are these slides as well as the recording of this session will be posted on the developer portal developer.zebra.com uh, and uh, the uh, recording will also be on YouTube we will put the sample code that uh, we can out on to um, github uh, with our with our other sample code and um, send out a link to everybody uh, in this uh, group to let them know that that uh, has been posted when we get that um so that's what we've got any other questions coming in not seeing anything uh so i think everyone thank you so much for joining us and uh have a great rest of your uh week so thank you so much thank you all by nicola so thank you everybody thank you